What's going on guys? Asian guy here bringing you a video discussing Adventure Rank 57. Now, as many of you guys know, if you have been following me on stream, www.twitch.tv forward slash Asian guy stream, I did actually hit Adventure Rank 57 a few days ago, and I'm actually now 25,682 EXP into Adventure Rank 57. I just kind of wanted to showcase what I have achieved at this Adventure Rank. But before we do that, I've completely and utterly forgotten to do something very, very important, and that is the Power Metric Transformer, which is quite, it's quite annoying that I've forgotten to do that. It is not a good thing. And I want to showcase that it doesn't make a difference what you put into this. So the first thing that we are gonna put into this, we'll just put a hundred and, we'll put 38 of these purples in a maximum amount. And people are like, oh, if you use a, what you call it? If you use, for example, a better material, you're gonna get better items in return, which is just not true. It's 100% not true. Whatever you put in is just completely random. And I just wanted to showcase that here today. Let's see. Are we actually charging this up? I feel like we're not charging it up. But, you know, it is what it is. We got double Zhongli, C1 Zhongli. This is the real reason why it's good. Boom. What do we get? 40,000 more. We get a bunch of green stuff again. One Bluetooth and one Guide to Prosperity, which I think is pretty much normal. I sometimes put in, well, most of the time I just put in Mint. And I have had 60,000 more, two other blue items and a bunch of greens as well. So as you see there, it doesn't really make a difference whatever you put in. The other thing that I wanted to showcase today is the reward at Adventure Rank 57. And remember, guys, if you haven't done so already, do your daily events. We have two daily events. We've got the daily login event, and then we have this new prepare for patch 1.5 event, which is going to be the housing event. If we go to notices, this one, the web event, Hilly Dream Camp has begun. So make sure to do this April 21st to April 27th. You get yourself a lot of free Mora, a lot of heroes wits. Well, not really a lot, but you know, every little bit helps. And on top of that, you will get yourself some primo gems as well. So claim adventure rank rewards i only get to do this like once every month and a half now and this is what i get for being one of the highest ranked players in the game adventure rank 57 i get 50,000 mora one acquaint fate two fragile resin 30 mystic enhancement ore and 21 heroes wits this is what i get for ar 57 it's not great, but we're going to claim those rewards anyway, and we'll take it. And Adventure Rank 58 is exactly the same thing. 59 is the same thing. And Adventure Rank 60, wow, instead of 50,000 more, guys, and one Acquaint Fate, we get 150 Primo Gems and three Acquaint Fate. Wow, for hitting AR60, which is the maximum cap. Now, before I forget to do this as well, I want to go to Wagner. I want to make sure that I have all my crystals. I'm going to show you guys basically everything I've obtained in this video. So everything I've obtained up to AR57 and what you can kind of expect from people who are AR57. Because obviously if you are Adventure Rank 57, it means you have the max refilling basically every single day for a very, very long time. So the... Alrighty guys, being the professional content creator I am, I kind of messed up my live recording and now I have to cut the video in all sorts of awkward positions positions because the main thing I wanted to show you guys today is not mainly my weapons and the items I have stocked up. Obviously people are going to be interested in that but I wanted to showcase to you guys at Adventure Rank 57 what all my characters look like, what the builds are, what the weapons are, what artifacts they have and how I play my characters. So we are going to go through every single character that I have. I'm going to try and make this as quick and sweet as possible. So let us open up the character archive or rather the characters menu and we are going to start off with Zhongli. These are Zhongli stats. They are looking pretty good. If we go into details, he has got a whopping 71.1% crit rate to 104% crit damage. Energy recharge at 128%, which is looking very nice, and 90.4 geo damage. His weapon is, of course, going to be the most paid to win option. Staff of Homer at refinement rank 5. He is my favorite character from day one. The reason I started playing Genshin Impact was because of Zhongli, so I gave him absolutely everything, including constant 6 as well. His constellations are, in my opinion, the best in the game. Only 
tied with Ganyu. I think Ganyu and Zhongli are unrivaled in terms of how good each of their constant constellations are, and I think those two are by far the best. Zhongli, I could triple crown him, but I don't really want to take this to level 10 just yet, and we have got the crowns on both of these elemental skills and the ultimate as well. Friendship level is, of course, going to be level 10 here. Friendship level 10, and then artifact so i build my zhongli to be a pseudo main dps mainly a bruiser i want his elemental skills his pillars to actually do damage so whenever i put that down i walk away to the other side of the field to go deal with other enemies or if i put these two down i want the hold e and i want the elemental skill to do damage on top of the ultimate also doing damage as well so that's why i'm going with gladiators and two piece arcade petra and the artifacts are pretty much all of my best ones here so this crit rate helmet i've shown this many times it is it's gonna be hard to find anyone else with an artifact better than this but it is virtually perfect the only thing that could have made this artifact better was obviously higher rolls in attack and crit damage we've got a max energy recharge there and if this hp was hp percentage instead this would have been genuinely a hundred percent artifact but it's like a 93 out of 100 rating artifact. If you don't know where to get the artifact ratings from, you could join my Discord. We have a bot in there that allows you to rate your artifacts out of 100. And this is the highest piece that I have. We've got a Geo Damage Bonus Cup, which gives us a lot of crit rate, uh, which it rolled all into crit rate, basically, which is really nice. We've got a very good HP Sands here with good substats there. We've got a very nice Feather there, which is giving us our chunk of energy recharge while giving us crit rate and crit damage as well. An amazing Flower here. The only thing better that I could have had here was HP percent and energy recharge, crit rate looking good, attack looking good, crit damage looking good. So that is my Zhongli. Next up, we have got Young Razore. These are his stats 2519 attack we have got 63.3 percent crit rate to 140 percent crit damage no energy recharge at all i am using the r3 wolf's gravestone right now however what i will what i will plan to do is switch this to the wolf's gravestone here because diluc is the one that i normally use my r3 wolf's gravestone on so that actually changes his stat significantly he loses a lot of attack stat there but that's basically all he loses artifacts we are going to go with a physical damage cup and two piece gladiators and two piece bloodstain i'm not going to show you guys the stats because that's something everyone is going to have different of i'm just going to show you guys the talents etc etc with the artifact build but not the specific stats going forward but yes yeah, so this is a really good mask as well very similar to the other gladiators mask that i have but because i don't want the video to be too long i'm just going to be showing you guys talent levels constellation so if you have seen other footage of me playing with the characters you can kind of gauge oh how how i built up these characters next up we have got a level 60 rosaria she's got the death match on her artifacts are just basically full set of noblesse she doesn't even have a cryo damage goblet here guys the only reason i'm using this right now is for friendship exp i want to get her name card her friendship is at level six right now her talent levels are all one 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 and her crit rate is at 103 percent and the reason why is because her talent here shadow samaritan after using her ultimate gives me 15 percent crit rate to all my other characters near her ultimate basically next up we have got the traveler katsu here at 2424 attack we got 62 percent crit rate 110 percent crit damage obviously that can be better energy recharge at 135 percent we've got the r1 primordial jade cutter we've got artifacts as two piece archaic and two piece gladiators again nothing too special geo damage cup as well so that is the thing you want to go to everyone has constellation six or can get constellation six for free and then talent levels are seven ten and nine next up we've got shao shao is level 90 2311 attack 78.1 percent crit rate to 174.4 percent crit damage weapon is going to be an r3 primordial jade wing spear we've got two piece gladiators and two piece viridus and venera i can do a lot better on my artifacts here but i do not have a very good helmet here once i change this helmet i will be able to change this goblet into this very very disgusting piece that we have here 34.2 percent crit damage so 
that's something i look forward to constellations six and then talent levels nine twelve twelve all one away from being crowned and next up we have got ganyu also level 90 out of 90 crit rate 27.2 percent i have blizzard strayer on her so this goes up to 67.2 percent and then 230.6 percent crit damage 104% energy recharge as well. Weapon is going to be an R1 Amos bow. And then we have a full set of Blizzard Strayer with a Cryo Damage Goblet as well. The helmet I'm using is Crit Damage 2. It's not a very good helmet. We've got Constellation 6 on her. As I was saying, I do think her Constellation 6 is arguably as good as Zhongli's. But those two, every single Constellation is really, really good for both of them. Whereas, for example, if we look at Xiao, this Constellation is pretty much pointless this one is rubbish and you know these are just level up ones which are going to be useful for everyone else but there's like two useless constellations on my c6 shell so that's what i mean when i say that ganyu and zhongli have really really good constellation talent levels are going to be 699 i actually have not given any of the shadow of the warriors to ganyu because they have all gone into shell so my ganyu could be a lot stronger if I do plan to level up any of these paths, essentially what is 666, it's all going to go into her attack first. I will crown her attack eventually, unless there comes a day where there's a character with an even stronger normal attack that also uses these butt plugs. But right now in the game, I'm not struggling at all. So Ganyu is already overkill damage. I don't need to make her even more overkill than she already is. Next up, we have got Child, aka Tartalia, 2,400 attack, 62.4% crit rate to 140% crit damage, a little bit of energy recharge as well. Skyward Harp R1 artifacts are going to be a full set of Heart of Depth with a Hydro Damage Goblet, which is unfortunately not very good. So Child is someone that I wish I had Constellation 6 and I could do a little bit more for the build, but I decided to resist and he is Constellation zero one of my favorite characters to play with though and i have him at seven nine nine well seven is because i would assume that's what he gives himself and then i don't have any of these crowned i could crown them but i don't think i'm going to crown them because i do think it would be a bit of a waste to use the crowns on child at the moment his damage already is pretty solid it's not anything superb but it is pretty solid as it is one of my favorite characters to play with tartalia we have got diluc level 90 out of 90 2683 attack 80 percent crit rate at 152 percent crit damage a little bit of energy recharge as well pyro damage bonus at 61.6 percent r3 wolf's gravestone and we got a four piece crimson witch of flames again with a pyro damage goblet a very very nice pyro damage goblet at that Diluc is somehow constellation six guys every time i've lost my 50 50 and i got Diluc, i've been very 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 lucky because i don't have any other characters that are standard banner remotely close to constellation six i think three of these constellations or two of them including the main Diluc, so the first copy actually came from the standard banner so three out of seven of my Dilluks were at least on the standard banner, maybe even four. So I've been very, very lucky to get that. Diluc is very much like Shao, 9, 12, 12, very close to crowning all of them. And I have been tempted to crown Diluc. I've been having a lot of fun picking up and playing Diluc again. So I'm tempted, I'm tempted. That is a C6 Diluc. We've got Albedo at level 80 out of 90. Now Albedo, <coughs> Alvedo voice crack is actually a character that I should take to level 90 because if my Albedo is at level 90 he will do more damage now having said that I do want to save these right I do want to save these and you know uh, it is what it is it is it you see we look at that his defense just went up almost 150 that is a significant amount of defense to actually increase by so that's nice. 2,437 defense is what our Albedo is at now. So our Albedo, I'm very curious to see how much damage he's going to do. Harminger of Dawn at refinement rank 5, level 90. It is a 3-star weapon, but whenever I run Albedo, it's with Zhongli. So I'm very confident that his HP will never fall below 90%. Again, I say this all the time. If you do not have Zhongli or you do not have a reliable way to keep Albedo above 90% HP, it is not worth running this weapon because you're going to lose all of that crit rate. Artifacts are going to be two-piece Gladiators and two-piece Archaic Petra. I know a lot of people would prefer to run two-piece Noblesse, but the reason why I'm running two-piece Gladiators is because of this. 
I do not have a better helmet than this for Albedo. 28.7% crit damage, some crit rate, energy recharge, flat defense. It's virtually perfect for Albedo and defense percent. And then this flower as well gives me crit damage, defense, crit rate. And it's better than all my noblesse pieces, right? So it's a shame, but it is what it is. I was originally running noblesse on Albedo, but at the same time, I don't really use Albedo's ultimate that much, but it is a shame. But I just had to do it guys. The artifacts were just that good. Constellation is at zero and talent levels are at 366. And I do plan on leveling this up in the future. I want to have this at level 10. I do think I will crown this because I want Albedo's elemental skill, the passive proc to do close to 25,000 damage, which I think is gonna be a lot. It's a very, very big bonus there. So Albedo will try out later in the video because you just seen me take him to level 90 and he now has 2,430. 37 defense next up we got venti at level 80 out of 80 and i actually have not taken him up to the level 90 mark which is something i should probably do so i can give him exactly 200 energy recharge and as you saw there guys i'm now down to 6.7 mil mora before recording this i had 8.5 million mora so i've lost a lot of mora right now i've got stringless on venti eventually i plan to change this to Skyward Harp, of course. I guess Windbloom Ode can go on him as well, but I do want to change this to the Skyward Harp. And then Artifacts, they're not properly built yet. I want a full set of Vera Descent Venera, but right now I've got two piece Noblesse and two piece Vera Descent simply because those are my best artifacts that I do have on him. And then we have Animo Damage Goblet as well. Constellations are going to look like that. And then Talent Levels are going to be 267. We've got very, very poor stats here 50% crit rate, crit damage is 100 and 51%. Energy recharge at 192% without an energy recharge weapon is of course very nice. And I forgot to show you guys Albedo's details. Albedo, let me put him in the party. So if we put Albedo in the party, then the Harbinger of Dawn stats will show. If you didn't know this guys, if you have a character which scales off their weapon with HP, you need to have them in the party. Otherwise, that part of the weapon ability is not actually going to show. So if we go into Albedo now, Albedo's crit rate now goes up to 71.1%. And that is coming from his active passive because the, the game now knows that Albedo is above 90% HP, which is why he gets that 28% crit damage bonus. So that is an insane ratio. Those are some insane stats on Albedo. Maybe I want a little bit more crit damage. So the only thing that I could change here is if I got a really good crit damage helmet with a lot of crit rate and a lot of defense percent in there as well which is just going to be equally as hard to get as what i already have next up we've got gene so gene i've got two piece veridus and venera weapon is going to be the primordial jade cutter attributes are looking like that and gene's attack looks very very low there but again just as i said because we don't have her in the party that's not actually showing up accurately so again if we go change the party and we take albedo out and we put in gene or we take rosaria and we put in gene let's put in gene gene stats will change now she will have more than 1600 attack she's gone up to 1900 and that's just how the hp weapons work you have to have them in your party otherwise it's not going to show crit rate is just under 70 percent crit damage at 120 percent and then energy recharge pretty high at 186 percent i have given her an energy recharge timepiece here which is end time there. Yeah, energy recharge there as well. And we've got the Animo Damage Goblet on her, not level 20 either. Two piece Veritas and Venera and two piece Gladiators Finale. Let's take a look at next up. It's going to be, we have got Hu Tao. Now Hu Tao again. The attack stat is low because I don't have her in the party. Let's switch her out. Staff of Homer again is going to be a weapon that requires her to be in the party to actually showcase. So with Hu Tao, I actually do want to take her HP under 50%. And then at boosted levels, Hu Tao's attack is basically 4,000. Max HP 30, 37,000. We've got weapon, refinement rank 1, Staff of Homer. We've got Crimson Witch of Flames, four piece set here. We've got a Goblet, which is going to be Pyro Damage Bonus. My Hu Tao is not built very well. She's got C1, Constellation 1. Talent levels are going to be 666. I believe I forgot to show that on Jean. Talent levels 369, Venti 267 as well. So Constellation 1, artifacts are like that. Weapons are like this. And then the attribute she has 62.5% crit rate and 202% crit damage. So that is my Hu Tao. 
And then next up, we have got Fischl. Fischl, 2.2k attack. Weapon is going to be Skyward Harp, Artifacts, 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Gladiators Finale, Constellation 6, Talent Level 6, 10, 7. And then we have got 73.7% crit rate, 160.9% crit damage, which is going to come through mainly because of the Skyward Harp. And of course, we've got Electro Damage Bonus on the Gobbler as well. Everything else is going to be crit rate. And then the standard attack percent timepiece. Most of my characters are built with a crit rate mask with crit rate weapon or crit damage weapon but crit rate mask is basically what i have on all my dps characters next up we've got bennett bennett who i want to take up to level 90 as well because the base attack is what scales off with bennett we've got the quila favonia because it has a really high base attack on bennett we have got noblesse obliged everything i've put on here is basically to give him as much energy recharge as possible constellation six i know a lot of people don't like putting constellation six on bennett but this is only going to affect physical damage characters and i don't really play with bennett too much and when i do play with bennett it's to increase ultimate damage so i don't really care about having constellation six it's really nice to boost deluxe damage as well so everything i've got here one four nine and then if we take a look at bennett's attributes he has 215 percent energy recharge and terrible crit rate and crit damage which i don't really care too much about i need to take aquila favonia to level 90 and also Bennett to level 90 if I want to make the most of his ultimate because what is going to be transferred from Bennett's ultimate is the white number. It's not going to be the green number. The green number is completely irrelevant. It's going to be the white number. So if you want to transfer that, you need to have Aquila Favonia max level and also Bennett at max level to get it as close to 1000 attack as possible but that's bennett if you didn't know you don't need attack percent substats on bennett you don't need attack percent artifacts on bennett it's better to go either healing bonus or hp percent if you want your bennett to be a support if you want your bennett to be dps then of course go with attack crit rate crit damage etc etc next up we've got ningguan ningguan is at level 71 stats are looking pretty good though 2000 attack 70 percent crit rate 127.7 percent crit damage some energy recharge there as well weapon is going to be the lost prayer which i just got i did have solar pearl on her before and then these are going to be the artifacts two piece gladiators two piece archaic petra constellation six talent levels which i just leveled up before the video 899 and that is everything on Ningguan. I'm running out of breath here. This is like a marathon. We've got Chongyun next, which has absolutely nothing on Chongyun. I have no artifacts on Chongyun. Chongyun is not built at all, but Skyward Pride is what I would use. And then Chongyun level six or Constellation six, talent level 699 as well. We've got Kaching. Kaching, I have no artifacts on, nothing special on her. Constellation is unfortunately two and talent levels 544. Kaching, I will build one day, but for me, Kaching is one of the weaker five stars in the game. Physical damage is again a bit of a meme, but of course, it's still viable. Viable does not mean they're amazing, but it does not mean they're bad either. It means they're usable. Compared to any other characters in the game, any other five star characters rather in the game, I would say Kaching is probably the second worst five star in the game. I know loads of people would not like to hear that, but that that's just my opinion if we disagree with it that's absolutely fine it's mainly because electro is just a little bit weak and physical damage is not really comparable to the damage that you can do with for example pyro melt comps or you go with the vaporized comps with hydro so that is why and play style wise i do like kaching but I just don't want to farm the Electro Domain, honestly speaking. So Kaching will have to wait. And I'm sure Raiden is probably going to full out power creep her as well. Let's go on to Mona. So Mona, I have basically made into full on support. Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer. Only level 60. Don't really play her. Noblesse, just a janky set of Noblesse on her. Constellation 1. Talent levels 1116. So six is her ultimate and I don't really play with Mona as well because I'm not someone that likes to do the big ultimate damage showcases with the one shots. I don't really care about that stuff. I'm not a waifu player either. So Mona and Kaching are not really like a waifu to me and I don't really see waifu. So that's why they're not leveled up. Same reason why Rosaria is not really leveled up. We've got Diona here, level 60, sacrificial bow, only at level 50, refinement rank five. We've got full set of noblesse on Diona. She is... Constellation 6, talent levels 197. I believe energy recharge on her is only 163.3%. So I want more energy recharge on her. But these are the talent levels I have on Dion. I used to play with her a lot, but now for my two teams in Spiral Abyss, I only use Zhongli 
and I also use Jean on my second team. So with Zhongli, I don't need a healer. With Jean, I don't really need a shield or a healer. So Jean is just a better healer for me because I run her with Xiao. And with Xiao, having the double Animo is really easy to charge up his ultimate. And Diona doesn't really have a place in that team. Well, let's take a look. Elise, I have at level 60. No artifacts, no real weapon there with Sif at refinement rank 5, Constellation 6, talent levels 174. I do plan on building Lisa in the future. Yes, above Kaching because I do think she's more interesting than Kaching to play with. So Lisa, I do plan on building her in the future. Sing Chu, we have at level 60. Weapon is going to be the Sacrificial Sword, refinement rank 5. We've got full on Noblesse because of full on support. Sing Chu, Constellation 6. Talent levels are going to be 176, and energy recharge is going to be 203%. Sing Chu really, really needs to have energy recharge. His ultimate is superb, very underrated character, and I think more and more people are realizing how good this character is as a support. We got Xin Yan, who have the Serpent Spine. I think, aesthetically speaking, it looks really good on her. Artifacts, nothing. Constellation, six. Talent level 144. I have not invested into Xin Yan at all. Maybe one day, but again, I don't really like her playstyle. It's spin to win. It's a charge attack playstyle, which is physical damage, which I already have with Razor. I don't really want another physical damage carry as of yet. Shang Ling is also full on support. I got prototype star glitter on her, full on noblesse. It's not a properly built Shang Ling either. Constellation 6. Talent levels are going to be 155. Highly invested into her. Energy recharge is 226.7%. She's really just there for reactions. Her artifacts are abysmal, by the way. Look at this. A level 8 pyro damage goblet. I have not built her to have any damage at all. Chi Chi, which I think unanimously people will agree is the worst 5 star in the game. Only the hardcore diehard Chi Chi fans will disagree. And again, guys, we're not saying she's the bad character. She's just the weakest five star out of all the five stars in the game. Like if you compare her to Zhongli, it's like an insult to Zhongli to compare Chi Chi to Zhongli because healing at end game is just not as useful as what it used to be at mid game. If you're mid game or early game, healing is amazing. And I know I'm going to get angry comments in the comment section will be like, well, my Chi Chi is built like this and my Chi Chi does this and that. But the common sense or the logic dictates, you know, that if you have, for example, a shield character that's properly built like Zhongli, you don't need a healer and you will be able to prevent yourself from being one shot. A healer cannot prevent you from being one shot and it will reduce your damage per second because you're spending time healing as opposed to dealing damage, which is why, logically speaking, Chi Chi is just not someone that can compare to other 5-star characters that fulfill that role of either healer or support to increase your damage. Her cryo application is poor as well, which is why I personally believe that Chi Chi is by far the worst 5-star in the game. Her constellations to top it off are awful as well, but if you do want to build Chi Chi, you kind of need to have a sacrificial sword, otherwise her elemental skill is not going to be there. Full Maiden's Beloved or Noblesse is the way to go, but for me, I don't really plan on playing Chi Chi. I do have a constellation on her. Her constellations are just awful. All of them are rubbish until Constellation 6, which is why people get upset when they pull dupes of Chi Chi. Talent levels 111. It's going to stay that way probably forever. She is adorable, I know, but not for me. Chi Chi is not for me. Beido, another character I want to level up in the future. Weapons, I've got the bell on her just for aesthetics. I don't play her. And then no artifacts. Constellation 6, talent levels 144. We got Barbara, level 40. I don't play her. Favonius Codex, no artifacts. Constellation 6, talent levels 155. Not touched Barbara in a long, long time. Noel, level 20. I'm sorry, Noel. Skyrider, great sword. Just random artifacts on her. Constellation 6, talent levels 144. 144, 141, and 111. So all of these other characters here, Sucrose, level 20, no artifacts. I will one day maybe build Sucrose if I ever want to do those big PP damage showcases where I then give her all my elemental mastery stats, main stats, everything elemental mastery into Sucrose. And then Kaya, I do want to build. I want to take Kaya up to level 80 in the future one day. He looks so cool. I mean, the Aquila Favonia just looks great on him. Kaya is a character I will build in the future, but that's still very, very far into the future. It's very expensive to invest into characters, which is why I've not built my Kaya up here. Amber. Yeah. Amber. Yeah, she's just... Yeah. 
I'm not gonna, I'm just, she has a Amos bow there, but I'm not going to level Amber up. And I don't have a single constellation of Amber, guys, which means I have never, ever pulled Amber. I've spent almost $10,000 on this game, and I've never pulled Amber. And I have pulled on the standard banner multiple times. I have Kaya C3, so four Kayas. I have Lisa C6. So seven Lisas. Well, I pulled six Lisas and I pulled three Kayas. I've never pulled Amber and I even have C6 Diluc. So Amber is rarer, believe it or not, than a five star. Amber is harder to pull than five star characters. So that is all of my characters, all of their artifacts, all of their builds as well. So that is kind of what I have at Adventure Rank 57. Now, the next part of the video, guys, I'm going to talk about the weapons that I have and the resources that I have and all the other stuff I've been doing at Adventure Rank 57. And it's going to be a bit of a jumbled up video because I recorded that part first. I meant to record this part first, but now hopefully I've cleared that up and that makes sense. So I will see you in the next part of the video, which is coming from me in the past. See you in a bit. So these are my weapons, guys. I am a whale. As a content creator, I have made the decision that I want to be one of those that does well, that can showcase a lot of different weapons and still also enjoy the game to my own extent. So we've got an Amos bow, level 90 refinement rank one. We've got a level 90 refinement rank one Skyward Harp times two, one for Fischl, one for Child, and I plan to get a third one for Venti. So this one I will be putting on Venti when I get to level 90. I just level 90 my Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds. For Ninkwan, we have a Refinement Rank 3 Primordial Jade Wing Spear. But when I do showcases for characters using the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, I use a Refinement Rank 1 weapon. So this one is just for my own personal leisure. We've got a Refinement Rank 5 Staff of Homer. I know, guys, it is a cursed weapon, the Staff of Homer. If you've seen Tectone's video, you've seen how cursed it can be. And for a lot of other people, they got completely destroyed on this banner. I got really, really lucky, and I basically got everything that I wanted. So Staff of Homer, I won almost all the 50-50s that I cared about because I wanted Wolf's Gravestone, which you can see here at Refinement Rank 3, and also have a spare one at Refinement Rank 1 for, again, showcase on videos, because I know most people watching my videos will not have anything more than a Refinement Rank 1 five-star weapon. But Staff of Homer, this is for my own personal leisure, which I have got on Zhong Li, who is my main character that I play with. And then we also have one at Refinement Rank 1 on Hu Tao. Now, if I want it to be efficient, I should put this on Hu Tao. I should put this Refinement Rank 5 on Hu Tao because my Zhong Li is virtually never under 50% HP. It makes no sense for my Zhong Li to be under 50% HP because if he was under 50% HP, it means he's not doing his role properly, which is to shield my team and prevent me from taking any damage whatsoever. So unless I manually deplete his HP, he's basically not going to get the second half bonus of the Staff of Homer. But regardless of that, I still don't care because he's my favorite character. I just want to max maximizes damage so i will have the refinement rank five even without the second half of this ability which is when the wield is hp less than 50 percent this attack bonus is increased by an additional 1.8 percent of max hp is going to waste it doesn't bother me because i just want to maximize zhongli to his fullest potential we've got a wolf's graystone refinement rank three which i normally have on diluc but as you guys know i did give razor a second chance and i've been having a lot of fun revisiting characters that i stopped playing and they're mostly four stars. So Ninkwan, Young Razore, and of course the fight is technically a five star, but the adventurer Aether has been a lot of fun. And as you can see, I'm still nowhere near maxing out my weapons. So I need to take this to level 90. Second Wolf's Gravestone for showcase purposes. I need to do that soon because Eula is incoming. I'm sure many people are going to be curious with these two five star claymores, aside from the new one that's coming for her, that they want to see this at level 90. So I want to I want to take both of these to level 90. Sword, I need to take both of these to level 90. Primordial Jade Cutter. This one's not even actually ascended to the final level of six. We've got the Summit Shaper which I realistically speaking probably not going to take to level 90 it's not that great of a weapon it's okay but it's not that great I've got refinement rank 2 Aquila Favonia which means I have to take this one to refinement or not refinement I need to send this to six stars 
and take that to level 90. It's on KO right now doing nothing. We've got another Amos bow, which I don't plan to level 90 anytime soon because I can always just switch off Amber's one. Skyward Harp, which I'm going to take up eventually. And then Skyward Blade, honestly, I don't think I will take to 90 because I do think this is probably the worst five-star weapon in the game. Now, being a, the worst five-star weapon in the game doesn't mean you're bad. It just means in a class full of, you know, weapons that get A stars, like the Staff of Homer, like the Skyward Harp, that this one just doesn't really compare and it pales in comparison. Now, having said that, I do think the three best weapons in the game are Staff of Homer, Skyward Harp, and the Primordial Jade Cutter. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, what about Wolf's Gravestone? What about Wolf's Gravestone? The problem with Wolf's Gravestone is that it's just attack. It's just literally all attack. And it's a drugged up version of the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Saiyan. Now, that's not inherently bad. I would say Wolf's Gravestone is probably a top five weapon. Aesthetically speaking, it's still number one for me. I do think it's the best looking weapon in the game. But crit rate and crit damage cannot go understated how useful it is to have that in your weapon especially when you're getting a good amount of attack stat from the weapon as well so with the skyward harp it has the highest base attack in the game right now it's going to be replaced by eula's weapon but this is the highest base attack in the game and on top of that it gives you crit rate and crit damage which is so 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 valuable when it comes to building your characters then you also have staff of home which gives you a ridiculous amount of crit damage and it gives you a lot of attack because when you're increasing your hp you also gain attack bonus as well so this weapon's giving you attack good base attack crit damage and bonus hp as well so four different stats you're benefiting benefiting from there skyward harp really high base attack good crit rate and crit damage so three really important stats wolf's gravestone is just attack 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 and it's literally just attack so when it comes to diversifying your damage profile wolf's gravestone is a little bit of a no bueno primordial j cutter crit rate attack hp really really nice three really important stats that you're getting there as well and there's obviously a lot of other good weapons you know amos bow aquila favonia they're all decent weapons lost predators sacred winds is also a very very good weapon i would probably put this in the top five as well crit rate really high crit rate good base attack and also increased movement speed and then a damage bonus so four different stats on there the thing is that i would say that i call them spell casters but catalyst users i don't think are insane right now Klee is very good but i don't think she's as useful as for example someone like zhongli and you know other bow characters maybe like venti but that's all down to personal preference like the skyward harp plus a bow character i think is better than the lost prayers plus a Klee, for example because this one here is i guess this is really good for Klee because it says until the character falls or leaves combat it's still a very very good weapon now having said that i know people are curious about four star weapons as well which we have a lot of them and i have a lot of pole arms at four stars and not a lot of claymores now i think a lot of people will be curious about the claymores especially this one the serpent spine and now we have the buff Zhongli. Originally, I said Th Serpent Star Spine was one of the best battle pass weapons in the very first battle pass. And I would say it's dropped down significantly until the buff of Zhongli. Now with the buff of Zhongli, Serpent Spine, if you have this at refinement rank 5, is actually disgusting. I think it actually does more damage than the Wolf's Gravestone at R1. So if you have a Wolf's Gravestone at refinement rank 1 or even 2, maybe even 3... If you have the Serpent Spine at Refinement Rank 5 and you have Zhongli shielding on you, I do believe this actually does at level 90 more damage than the Wolf's Gravestone because it also has crit rate as well, which is really, really useful. So I do think this is something that a few people have begun to sleep on now. Out of the Battle Pass weapons, I think the Solar Pearl is probably the best one. This passive here is just ridiculous it's got good base attack it's got good crit rate i do think the solar pearl is the best weapon on there especially because catalysts are kind of hard to come by you got memory of dust which is not good lost prayers which is solid you've got the skyward atlas which is okay i don't think it's that great compared to the lost press i do think lost press is better this just gives you four different things which is really really useful as opposed to lost prayer which gives you attack and attack and bonus physical damage bonus so it's it's kind of whatever and then if we're taking a look at the Black Sword, I think it's the second best one. And then I would say the Serpent Spine. And then what is the last one? Deathmatch, fourth. And then at the bottom, I would say Viridescent Hunt. I would say that because Viridescent Hunt, this passive here, 
is just not very useful. It's only good against small enemies and in a very small radius. And this effect, I just don't think is very, very good. I really just don't think this weapon is very good. Vera Descent Hunt, I do think is by far the worst one on the weapons banner. Serpent Spine, if you don't have Zhongli, is also not very good. But if you have Zhongli or you have Noel or you have Xinyan properly built with really big shields, then I think this is pretty huge. But this is what my weapons are looking like at AR-57. I just took a weapon to level 90, which is why I don't have any enhancement or I have made the foolish mistake of not having any of my white tassels or any of these Skyrider great swords saved. You can't get these weapons from the weapons banners, the Traveler's Handy Sword, the White Iron Great Sword. You can't get these weapons from the weapons banner. So I should have really saved these when I found them from chests. And I plan to do so when we finally get in Azuma. Hopefully we can still get these weapons from chests and I can save them because some of them are pretty good F2P options and stuff worth showcasing. Now that has been a lot on the weapons and I don't think people really wanted to concentrate on the weapons to begin with. But the first thing that I really wanted to showcase was characters. So this video might be out of order because what you're watching now i may have done the characters first so what i'm going to show you guys next is all the items and resources that i have a 1500 heroes wits 2163 adventurers experience and 1493 wanderers advice i went to town on the oceanid event max refilling every day just to get as many of these as possible and this is not even enough Heroes Wits to take four characters from level one to 90. And that's just Heroes Wits alone. Obviously I have these two, but if I wanted to rely on Heroes Wits alone, I don't have enough to take four characters to one to 90. That is ridiculous. That's how expensive it is. I have 7.3 million Mora, which is still not enough because once I start crowning characters, crowning characters 800,000 or something per crown. If I just double check my Zhongli, Zhongli is very close to being triple crowned. I don't think I'm gonna triple crown him, but it's actually 700,000 Mora a pop per crown. And that's that's not enough this is just not enough because when i take a character to 1 to 90 that's millions of more if i take the talent levels up that's millions of more again and that's just not enough i need to have more more and if you've seen other players with like 20 million more and that's because they wail so much on the weapons banner or character banners and they can just buy more from the shop so if i go to the shop here and i show you guys this stardust exchange they're able to get all of this and just buy out the shop completely and just buy infinite mora from here which is something i cannot unfortunately do because i'm not going for r5 weapons or anything i'm not going for c6 characters every single time so i have been farming mora five times every single day with condensed resin which gives me 600,000 mora every single day and it's a pain but it's something that i just have to live and deal with as for materials i have a lot of the hilly child drops i've got a fair amount of the chaos cores which you get from ruin guards of ruin hunters i need more of these ley line sprouts way way need to have way more of those i need to have more of these as well which are from the level 60 plus agents the assassins and as for materials here we've got devalence plume devalence claw devalence sigh i've not really used much of these other than the plume for diluc and also for bennett and Jean. so i want more plumes claw i'll be using again for razor and then we got tail of boris which is for venti ring of boris which is for kaching it's for klee and for other characters spirit locker of boris which is mainly for if i remember correctly nink one which i will start using soon i want to take nink one to i think level 80 out of 90 so max ascension and then we're also going to need this for fischl as well tusks and of course shards and butt plug shadow of the warriors i need more of these i need more of this for ganyu i need more of this for shao if i want to crown shao that is and tus i need more for zhongli and i need some for albedo as well albedo is a sleeper pick which i am going to plan to use a little bit more often as well we've got a lot of hurricane seeds we've got enough to basically 1 to 90 any character but i am going to plan on farming more of these materials because i need more gladiators the only way to get gladiators and also wanderers outside of doing the weekly bosses is unfortunately going to be farming the world bosses and the ones i'm probably going to be doing is the primo geo app because if we get any leeware related characters in the future i'm pretty sure they're all going to be using juvenile jade so i will showcase to you guys in this video myself actually farming all of that stuff later on but otherwise we've got other materials like all of this down here and then we've got a lot of chunks here which i have feel like i'm running low on here 
So the green ones, I'm looking really, really low for Vajrada chunks, which is for electro characters, which I believe I'm going to want more of in the future. If we get Raiden, this is going to be for Raiden, but that's very, 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 very far into the future. I've got a lot of Geo ones, which I probably will convert because most of my Geo characters are close to maxed. I don't plan on leveling up Noel anytime soon. Animo is looking really, really low, but I don't see any Animo characters that I plan on taking to level 90 anytime soon. And then, of course, books. I have actually not got a lot of books lying around, which is a shame. Three crowns still. Weapons and materials. I'm actually kind of looking low on here other than the fetters, which I have plenty of. But other, other weapons here, I'm kind of looking really, really low on. So I do need to farm those up as well. And talent materials. Well, I have this thing called the virtuous share bundle, which is a pay to win item that I can just basically claim 75 more of any talent books that I want in the future. As for everything else, we got 48 Fragile Resin, 22 Acquaint Fate laying around there. And then, have I done everything else here? I've got all of these random items. I can actually exchange this for Mora, but I decided to just hold on to it. It's, it's just nice to have. And we've got all of this here. We've got materials here, which I actually need more white iron chunks. Prototypes not looking too good. Prototypes not looking too good. Crystal cores, there's got, I've got plenty of them. I take them from other people's worlds as well. We got tons and tons and tons of food. I need to be farming more borking, to be honest. But materials wise, I do farm a lot of materials. Food, I have a lot of food. Delicious monster hash brown. We got plenty of delicious sweet madame. We got plenty of all that good stuff there as well. We got 60 of the five star weapons food. And we got some potions lying around there. But as you guys know, I don't really like using potions or food buffs to do my showcases. So that is stuff that we don't have Alrighty, guys to end off the video i'm kind of curious because i actually changed the builds for all of my characters before recording this for my geo characters so my eighth has a new build my ninkwan has a new build because i took her weapon to level 90 and albedo as you saw during the video i actually leveled up as they all check out yuri walking past so i do want to see what my damage looks like now with the full geo party so this should be interesting before my albedo i believe was able to hit 12k per proc on the elemental skill this is a good place to get geo crystal flies by the way if you want to go for crystal cores i missed one there and then there's one over here so hopefully we can pick that one up okay we picked that one up how much damage is ninkwan katsu and albedo going to do so let's actually start off with this put that shield down boom then we'll put this down, boom, 5k, 5.4k, there's the ultimate, boom, 15k, I'm pretty sure I just saw 15k prop there with the E, we'll put the E down, 18k damage, walk through that, nice, 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 very good, very good, we'll do that, use the ultimate to help shred, and the, the things just disappeared basically, I kind of messed that up, right, we'll put that down, we're taking damage, unnecessary damage is being taken here, boom, we'll put that down, boom, Okay, Albedo, how much damage is there going to be? 17k! Did I just see 17k? Hmm. Interesting. I think I did just see 17k. Let's go over to the full Ruin Guards and really test this out over here. We'll put this down here first. We'll walk through here. Boom. 19.62k. I think that was actually Albedo's prop there. Where is... Boom. 14.2k. Huh. Maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe I'm going crazy. Right, let's go to the real challenge, which is going to be all the Ruin Guards. Now this, guys, what I'm about to show you is going to be disgusting, okay? What I'm going to show you is going to be disgusting. Full... Geo Party versus the Ruin Guards, it's going to be absolutely filthy. So prepare yourself. They're already standing up and walking for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it is what it is. All right, let's start off here. We'll go up here. Boom, boom, boom. We'll put this down. That's nice. 22k. We'll put this down. Boom. We'll put this down. Boom. And they're all slowly fading away. They're all slowly fading away. And we've got that one over there. Is he going to come into the dungeon? 
Is that Ruin Guard going to come into the dungeon? As you can see, all my ultimates are back as well. Let's start this over here. Let's put that down. Let's put this down. And we'll just stand up here. Oh, would you look at that damage? Would you look at that da- Oh my god. That is an absolute violation. That is an absolute violation. And that is all of my Geo characters now. But I didn't actually get to see how much Albedo was doing. I wasn't paying attention. So I need to go find something that I can kill very, very easily. So let's go over to the Assassin down here. And see how much damage Albedo's E is actually doing. Because I'm not being able to see that properly. Now, with the Geo Resonance, obviously if I, I have to hit them first so that they take bonus damage as well and i need to be near them with the zongli shield to reduce their resistances as well so that's going to be something interesting to see we can actually go for the hilly trails down here first as well and i need to walk through nink one's gates as well so there's a lot of stuff i have to keep in mind here with the full geo party right let's go down there we'll start off with this we'll start off with this walk through that with albedo we'll put the e down boom Right, I need to break his shield. Okay, this is not a good showcase. This is an absolutely awful showcase. Right. We're going to put this down. Right, we'll put this down. Walk through it with Albedo. Okay. We'll put the E down. Boom. Boom. 14.4k. Now, Albedo does do more damage when he is under an X amount of HP. Oh, never mind. Aether just killed him. All right, you know what? I'm just going to say Albedo does like 60k damage with his E now when the enemies are under 50% HP. But that has been it from me, guys. Hopefully that was an insightful video. Hopefully that was helpful. That is AR, Adventure Rank 57. All my characters. The only character I'm missing is Klee. I do not have Klee. I will build her in the future and I will summon for her. Eula as well. Yanfei too. But that's Adventure Rank 57. All my artifacts, all my builds, all my weapons, all my resources. The kind of stuff I do at Adventure Rank 57. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And bye-bye.